Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And what do I have here? What is this sweet little treat? This is a Barkley, B-A-R-C-L-E-Y. Clearly some kind of Tysco import build from the 60s. This was gifted to me from Grant Wilson over at Big Ear NYC Pedals. Uh, obviously, I mean, you look at that body shape, is trying to do the Fender Maverick thing, which is a totally wild shape to copy from everything I've ever heard in my life. The Fender Maverick was kind of a failed uh, design. It only ran for a couple of years. Uh, they were taking uh, Mustang bodies and chopping them up to be more psychedelic. <laughs> to compete with the uh, the hip looks of the time. And uh, people just didn't really buy it, and so the model got discontinued when they ran out of parts for these things. Uh, the Fender version had that giant field hockey stick headstock, too, for the most part, uh, that they converted from their 12-string guitars down to being a, a six-string guitar for the Maverick. This thing suffers from its own unique headstock. <laughs> I say suffers, but I actually really like this headstock. It looks like some sort of crazy decorative medieval weapon. I mean, when have you ever seen a headstock like that? It is a trip. It kind of like got this Gaia Tone freaky 60s influence to it, not to mention Tisco and uh, all those other wild import guitars of the time. Uh, let's go through some of the features and, you know, kind of like, quirks of this guitar obviously the body is buck wild but then you've got this trim on here with an incredible amount of crust and rust on it it is flaking in a way i've never seen a piece of chrome flake in my life like people should take photos of this and document it for rust museums <laughs> but it's also the beefiest and the smoothest version of this trim that I've ever messed around with in my life. I've, I've been playing around with this thing the past couple of days, having some fun with it. It's been missing a string uh, since it showed up and I've just been playing it as a five string. Uh, but this trim is just super smooth. Shockingly so, like I, I'd compare it to a Bigsby with how smooth it is. It's different in design than other Tysco trims that I've seen and that it has this weird little bracket right here that I think just holds the arm tight, which probably explains why it still has the arm. I've never seen that on one of these. The metal just seems thicker than normal. The whole thing just seems beefed up in every way. Um, so my experience with this guitar so far is that I want to track down more of them and just harvest these trims off of them. <laughs> the pickups sound really fun to me. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the pickups or the whole guitar or whatever, but this thing has a really like, Mose ridey, low sustain, like quick attack and then drop off sort of sound. Kind of a thud, a really nice thud from these pickups. Um, the switches, the bridge selector switch works just fine. The next selector switch is really crispy right now and you really gotta fiddle with it to get it to turn off. It's easy to turn it on, but it's hard to turn off the bridge. The pots all work, which is a huge shock. Uh, the fretboard, the frets are the, that like super flat vintage, like speed fret style thing. I'm fine with it. This is obviously not going to be a modern player with the frets the way they are. Um, I have been having the thought the past couple of days, like maybe I should invest in having this thing refretted to be a, more of a modern player since I like the sound of the pickups and the feel of that trim so much. But I don't know, it's, it'd probably be better to keep it as it is. Like I'm, I haven't found any big buzzes across the fretboard yet or anything like that. The action is fairly fast. I should probably just let it be what it is instead of just dicking with it and making it something else. Uh, zero fret up here. What you see as a nut is really just a string guide. It doesn't function as a nut at all. That zero fret nut there is really the nut. Um, little string bar thing holding everything down. The tuners are interesting in that at some point the high E disappeared and needed to be replaced. So someone swapped in very expertly, I will say, a new gear and tuning peg and tuning post. They don't match the rest. 
to me, it looks like something that came out of the 80s or the 90s versus the 60s. But someone did a great job of swapping in a uh, new tuner to keep the rest of the tuners in stock. Which, by the way, I've been using this and tuning it. They feel really smooth and really stable. Like, it doesn't fall out of tune any more than any other guitar with a trim on it. With some dingus like me <laughs> just going crazy on this thing. Um, the neck is fairly comfortable. Kind of small, but also kind of reminds me of a modern neck. Obviously, this thing is short. Do I have a tape measure around here? Let's figure out what the scale is. All right, scale length. 23 and a half inch scale length on this guitar, unless there's some sort of trick to measuring scale lengths that I just completely screwed up. Um, but that's what it measures from nut to bridge. By the way, the bridge is, you know, one of these saddle like single piece of metal things. Uh, I haven't measured it with the uh, with a tuner or anything to see how the intonation is, but I've been having fun with it. <laughs> I tend to bend all my playing out of tune anyways, so how bad could it really be? Uh, I have a feeling that swapping this out for modern tunematic or something like that, if I could find one with the right uh, width, um, would result in a more modern tone. But I kind of like this, like, spaghetti western, Mose Ridey, thuddy kind of twangy sort of thing that this guitar has going on. I kind of don't want to change that bridge if it's not a huge problem with this guitar. So I've really got my fingers crossed that I can fix this thing up a little bit and have it be a playable guitar that I could maybe church or maybe use for recordings or in demos or whatever. I think it's cool looking. I think it sounds cool. Uh, but now I want to take it apart and check out what's going on inside. See if I can remedy that switch. Um, see if there's anything that needs attention and then throw a new set of strings on here. So I'm gonna grab some tools and get started. Here we go. Oh man. Oh, these pickups are wild looking. You see there's no major sun fading in the finish or anything like that. This thing uh, lives somewhere kind of safe despite being a little bit roughed up. I was expecting it to be a little bit more vibrant underneath and it's really not that different. A little bit more red here than it is here and here than here, but not bad for a guitar that's likely 50 years old, 60 years old. The pots look super crusty, which isn't a surprise, but they still work. So I can't complain. I feel like there's lots of Supliferous wire in here. They didn't trim it up too tight. I really don't want to swap this switch. It just looks so unique to the guitar. I'd rather leave it alone. I'm wondering if I could spray some electronics cleaner in there and uh, get it to function perfectly again. I don't have any electronics cleaner, so I'll have to do that another time uh, and just have to accept it for what it is. I've never seen pickups with this build before. This is wild. I wonder if I should take one off to see if I can open it up. Is the cover? Yeah, the cover is separate from the pickup. I want to take off this cover and see what's underneath just out of curiosity because it is just a wild look there. I'm going to take a photo before I do anything. Oh boy, moment of truth here. I want to see what is in this thing. Oh, it's just the base. The pickup part did not come out. So though, you got some sort of brass copper base on this thing. Humongous chunk of plastic pickup cover here. Let's get a photo of those internals.
it looks like a bar underneath a coil with the poles on top. Pretty much a, from what I can tell, a, a standard kind of Stratocaster sort of construction to this pickup. Just a uh, different take on the components. Maybe I'll be able to find one of those switches on eBay or something like that. But I kind of doubt it. All the solders still look good on them. I just hate to make this thing something other than stock considering it does actually play kind of nice. Another thing I want to do before I button this up is I want to put my own bend on the arm if I can. I don't know, these screws are kind of stripped. I don't want to strip them more. I don't want to release that bar from this from the setup. So maybe I can go put this thing in the vise just with the whole guitar attached. I'll be right back. Hopefully I don't screw this up. All right, so I really just uh, straightened the bar out a little bit in the vise. I had to hold the guitar up to the vise uh, to do it. Let's get a photo of what the bin looks like now. It's, it's, there's barely a bin there. It, it ironed right out. I have a feeling I'll be a lot happier with that. The bridge saddle fell off, obviously, <laughs> while I was doing that. And it is just a marvel of design. I was expecting it to be a solid, you know, little triangle, milled triangle of metal, but it's a hollow tray. It's a bent piece of metal here. I should take a photo of this. I mean, this has got to be contributing to the unique tonal characteristics of this guitar. There's no way a piece of engineering like this doesn't <laughs> affect the guitar's tone in some way. Well, I've checked it out. Time to button it up, put some strings on it, and just accept it for what it is, I think. Um, unless I come up with some sort of big special mod for it, I can't see myself wanting to tweak it too much. There's some kind of wire hanging out through the trim cavity here, I'm trying to grab it. It's either an old string or it's the grounding wire. No, it doesn't seem to affect anything. That's not the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'll push it back in there. I mean, maybe it is the ground, but maybe it's attached elsewhere underneath the trim. The guitar could probably take a heavier set, but I've got these uh, D'Addario 10s here. And I think we'll do just fine. But a, a shorter scale like this, I'd normally put 11s or 12s on it. Yeah, maybe I should clean this up with a, uh, like a diaper wipe real quick. There's just quite a bit of dust on this headstock. While I'm here, it might be nice to give it a fresh start before I cover it up with strings. I can wipe down pickups and pick guards really low ratio on these tuners it takes about a half a turn and they jump up to tune all right did my d and my g those dirty middle strings time for the b and the e The tuning pegs are so rusty, I have to use a screwdriver to guide the strings up 
to be closer wound because they, they're just sticking, which is not going to spell out good tuning stability. You know what? Forget this headstock tuner nonsense. I'm going to bring in the heavy guns. Peterson Strobe Stomp HD. Does this have a battery in it? Yeah. All right, moment of truth. Fresh strings. It, I baby wiped it. I looked inside. <laughs> Otherwise, nothing's changed with this guitar other than having a high E now. up that neck pickup again. the bridge pickup. It doesn't sound like a super deep, you know, like creamy neck, but it's got a nice warmth to it. Neither of these pickups uh, hum cancel each other. You put them both on and you get double the hum. Which interestingly enough is how uh, Stratocasters used to be wired. get a measurement off the tip of this cable here to see what the output of these pickups is. If I don't, it's going to be embarrassing. I should have done this while it was open. I'm willing to call it a 4 because it's jumping between 3.5 and 5. I'm not getting the best signal off of here. Let's let's call it four on the bridge. And it's gonna be the same on the neck. It's not super hot pickups by any measure, but they have a nice tone to them. could still come out for me a bit. The extra tension of the high E brought it down, but it's, it's in a usable range for me now. And we're out of tune. <laughs> Should I throw a fuzz at this thing? I feel like it wants a fuzz. Let's tune it first. I bet those pickups are gonna sound awesome with the Carcosa. Kind of low output stuff tends to open up fuzz.
Well, this has been the Barkley. I don't know mo the model name, but the Barkley Fender Maverick copy tribute. It's not really a copy. The construction is totally different. Uh, <laughs> but man, this thing's pretty fun. I want to spend a bunch of time with it. Maybe I'll church it sometime soon. I bet this thing would sound just fine hitting some stack overdrives into triple stack and quadruple stack delays and reverbs and whatnot. Just get super ambient and weird with it. It loves that fuzz. I have a feeling it's going to love a bunch of other effects too. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude, nasty comments. Huge thanks to Grant Wilson of Big Year NYC. Go check out his pedals. He makes some really cool stuff. Uh, for sending me this guitar, uh, buy a shirt, blah, blah, blah. Call your mom, write your congressman, and uh, stay grounded. Bye, everybody.